Welcome to Splunk Knowledge Objects. This is going to be a brief video about what Splunk Knowledge Objects are and what they can do. In the next video called Lookups, we'll do a demo of one of the most important types of knowledge objects called a lookup. Knowledge objects add knowledge to and enrich your data. They are created by you the user or an app that you have downloaded and installed. They can include saved searches, field extractions, tags, event types, lookups, reports, alerts, data models, and more. What's a saved search? Well, as we know, once you search for something, you can click on save as and save it as a report, alert, a dashboard panel, or an event type. You've just created a knowledge object. And these are ultimately defined in savedsearches.conf. Field extractions are something that we've talked about previously in the course. So if you need a refresher, go ahead and go back to that video. But basically, fields can be extracted using the field extraction editor. And most often, we do regular expressions. But Splunk also gives us the option of doing it by a delimiter. And field extractions are defined in props.conf. I love tags. Tags are so cool. They allow you to take a specific field value combination and assign a, a friendly name to it. So for example, you might have inherited a server that has this weird long name that nobody can remember, but you know, for example, that this is the mail server for the Eastern UK region and it resides in building 1433, and that's why it has that weird name with 1433 in it. But other people who are using Splunk probably don't know that and don't want to type that in every time. So create a tag that has the field value pair, host equals, then the full server name. And the tag name can be really whatever you want. In this case, I've done mail-east-uk. Now, all people have to do to search with this server is type tag equals mail-east-uk. I also love event types, kind of like a named save search and kind of like a tag on steroids. In other words, you can tag an entire search string before the first pipe with an event type. So suppose you have this search, and if your organization runs it frequently, you may want to give it a friendly name, i.e. an event type. So here we've created event type equals East US errors, and event types can even include tags. So event types are very powerful. Lookups add custom fields to events from external sources like CSV files. So suppose your data has region codes, and you want Splunk to replace region codes with corresponding region names. Well, you create a region codes.csv. In one column, you put the not user-friendly region codes. And in another column, you put the region name that you want Splunk to replace it with. And then you do a lookup in your Splunk search. And stay with us because in the next video, we're going to actually do a demo of lookups. Thanks for joining me in this segment, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome! In this short video, I want to talk about Splunk lookups, and specifically lookup tables. Lookup tables add custom fields to events from external sources like CSV files. In the most simplest sense, a lookup table is a CSV file with two columns, like shown here. Now, say you have a region code in your Splunk data, and it's not really that user-friendly because it's just a number, and suppose you want to tell Splunk every time you see a particular region code, replace it with a particular region name. So as you can see there on the left, we have example region codes, and on the right we have example region names. So every time Splunk sees region code equals 2443, it will add another column next to that that is region name and says East US, we could also have it replace the existing value. It's pretty easy to add a lookup table to Splunk. We go to settings, then lookups, and then where it says lookup table files, choose add new. And on step number three, we can browse and actually upload the CSV file. And here's how a lookup command in Splunk looks. And notice, notice it's after the pipe because it is a command. So we do lookup. Lookup table name, lookup field one, and then output, and lookup field two. 
And again, lookups have a lot of different options and they're very powerful. But for this demo, we're just going to do a very, very simple lookup with two columns. And we'll do lookup region codes.csv for our lookup table name. And in this example, we might want to do lookup region codes.csv if that's the name of that CSV with those two columns. Region code, output, region name. It's, re it's really quite simple. Let's look at how to actually implement this. So in our Splunk environment, what I'm going to do is create a simple CSV, a comma separated document, just in Notepad. And I'm going to call it test. And I'm simply going to make two column names, call name one, comma, call name two. And I'm going to put some placeholders in here because we haven't actually looked at our data yet to see what values we want to replace. So val1 and val2, I'll put those in later. But just to make sure that this thing is working, let's output a message that says whatever the value is has been converted. And likewise for the second value. Now let's look at what data we actually want to replace here. And since we have no data coming into our Splunk yet, we can just use the index equals underscore internal to look at the Splunk logs. And we'll choose an event that has a few factors like log level perhaps. Now log level, this is already very user friendly. But let's say info, warn, and error are not what we want to see or we want to convert them in some way. So what we're going to do is for call name one, we'll do log and value one info value two warn. Just like this data is showing here. And for column two, we'll put info has been converted and warn has been converted. And let's save that as test.csv. Now back in Splunk, we simply go to settings, lookups, and where it says lookup table files, add new, and we'll browse and upload that test.csv that we just created. And destination file name, I like to leave it the same. And let's change the permissions so that everyone can do everything on this file. Great, so now we have our test.csv, the owner is admin, we have our permissions set. Let's take a look at our Splunk search and report app and we'll search again for index equals underscore internal. And this time we'll specify log level and put a wildcard there. So we wanna bring in all log levels. So this will match any events that actually have that log level field. So now let's do a Linux pipe and we'll start our lookup string. So lookup and then the table name, test.csv. And then the lookup field one will be log underscore level. The word output, the output will be call name two. Great, now let's make a simple table with the table command and we'll do log level, which will show us the original values and call name two, which should show us the new values. Great, so we have info has been converted. Let's specify that we want warn. At warn has been converted as well. So that's how you add and implement a very simple lookup table on Splunk. Thank you for joining me in this demo. You've made it through this course. I want to give you a huge thank you for joining me on this Splunking adventure. I really enjoyed making this course for you, and I really hope you enjoyed this course and got something out of it. You are now an intermediate Splunker, but it's only the beginning for you. With the tools and knowledge you now have, you can feel confident moving on to more advanced Splunk topics. So for example, what did we not cover in this course? Advanced SPL, including sub-searching macros, parameters, and performance tuning. We didn't edit configuration files directly and we didn't build any apps. We didn't install or configure advanced apps like Windows infrastructure or VMware. 
We didn't really cover data models except on a conceptual level. We didn't cover advanced architecture, like very large deployments, hardware requirements, how Splunk uses memory and processing, and the different Splunk index buckets. But that's okay, because I intend to make more courses, including an advanced Splunk course here on Udemy, so follow me on Udemy. And please rate this course. And if there's any reason you would not give it the full rating, please allow me to correct the issue before you rate. Again, I cannot express how grateful I am that you've enrolled in this course, and I wish you very well in your Splunk career.